Hey everyone, uh, I'm over here at the photo studio in San Jose, and today we're going to shoot a wine bottle two different ways. Uh, we're going to start with a simple light backdrop and a, a simple like sort of lighting setup, but I want you to realize, uh, and the point of this video um, that I want you to realize is that photographers that shoot product, that shoot people, like it, it takes a lot of knowledge and skill to do this uh, well, to do it well. So. Um, Let's, uh, let's take a look at our setup here. So what we have here is our nice uh, bottle of Kendall Jackson Merlot. Uh, we have that set on a white backdrop, and I'll show you kind of what our plan is uh, to achieve that look in a minute. Uh, we've got our soft boxes uh, down here. Is that them? Yeah. Uh, we're trying to, I'm going to try to use both of them. I think we're going to be fine with that today. Uh, over here we have our lighting setup, which are three Norman, uh, I think it's P2200, uh, 2400. ULH 2.0, wow. Anyway, <laughs> we have a Norman pack, and we're going to shoot with these today. These are kind of older, so they have like some little quirks about them. Um, like for example, uh, they can actually discharge and kill you if you don't know how to use them properly. So that'll be fun. Let's take a look at uh, the shoot we have here, or the equipment we have here today. All right. Is that okay? Can you guys see it? Um, I don't know if it's upside down. It's kind of hard for me to tell. Uh, now it should be right side up because my hands are on top and writing's right, right on the bottom. Okay, so here's going to be our first photograph that we're going to achieve. Just a very simple kind of white backdrop, white and airy, light and airy photo. And we're going to have some nice lighting on each side as well as a light on the top. You can kind of see there's a little bit of light wrapping around from the back here. So that's going to be what we're going to achieve first. And then we're going to have a more dramatic image uh, on a black backdrop. I have a wine glass right here. We're going to use to light both of them. And it's going to be a similar process, just a change of the backdrop, mostly. Uh, there's going to be some minor changes. Anyway, so here's what we're going to use for the white wine bottle, or the, the white backdrop picture. Uh, we're going to use a long lens for that because you can see that it's very, uh, it's very level, like it's not tilted you're not looking up at it, you're like on the same level as it. So to achieve that, we're going to use a really long lens. And because of lens distortion, uh, you should be able to adjust the camera quite a bit without getting that looking up or looking down sort of thing. And with this, we'll, with this shot, we'll be using uh, a wider angle lens uh, and lower so that it looks a bit more dramatic. All right, so uh, I've got my stuff all laid out here for you. Uh, I've got the lens I'm going to use. This is a 80 to 200 f2.8 uh, lens. It's an older lens, but it's a Nikon lens, and so it's uh, pretty much good to go, uh, no matter what camera you're using it on. Some newer digital cameras don't actually let you uh, cross over your old film lenses, but um, I got lucky with this one. I got it for pretty cheap, and I think this equivalent lens today that's brand new runs about mm, like $2,400 or something like that. Uh, I've got my Nikon D850 right here. I typically store this without batteries in it because there is a little, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little uh, display that li is lit up all the time, so that'll actually slowly drain your battery. It'll be over time, but you don't want to show up to a shoot and have a dead battery. This is my battery pack that'll attach to the bottom of the camera. Uh, you don't want to, you want to keep this lens cap off the body. You want to keep that on as much as possible because it'll actually suck dust into it because there's a bunch of magnets and other stuff in there. Uh, so you need to kind of be quick when you change lenses and, and, you know, just careful in general. I'm a bit lax. I know some people that are super, uh, 
super anal about that. Like it has to be op like the lens cap has to be removed inside of a, a light tight bag and that sort of thing. It, I, it's not that big of a deal. You just have to have some candor around. All right, so this camera is set to go. We've got some old pictures on here from before that I shot a couple weeks ago. Um, just some fun stuff I did in the studio. Oh, yeah, some plants. Anyway, let's move over to our other station here. So before we can really like get to the exciting stuff of like actually photographing it, we have to uh, set up our lights because this will just kind of achieve a boring look. Actually, you know what? I'll just take a photo and show you what it looks like right now. I'm going to do a pretty tight angle on it. It's going to be horizontal, or sorry, vertical. All right, take a look at this. That's what it looks like before. Pretty, pretty not very exciting, huh? It looks a little blurry. Sorry about that. Let's see what we can do to improve um, showing off the images at the end there. I'll, I'll probably also show them in a uh, like in the comments after the video is done. So it's a pretty boring shot. You can see the backdrop. Boy, that is really. Manually focus that here. Not really. Um, <laughs> maybe starting off white wasn't the best idea. Uh, anyway, you can kind of you can kind of see it. You can see a lot of the backdrop because there's a lot of shadows, extraneous shadows. It's not a bad looking picture, but we can clean it up quite a bit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up the lights around it, um, just to get it all set up. What I'm imagining here is three different lights. We're going to have two lights in the front to kind of get this, uh, two lights in the front to get this sort of highlight on both sides of the bottle. And then we're going to do a backlight, just a tiny, just a very little puff of light uh, that's going to uh, just fill in the back of this wine bottle, give it a little more depth. So let's move on from here. I'm probably not going to talk very much right now while I'm setting this up because um, I don't want to talk anything. <laughs> it'll, it'll just get in the way.
these are definitely uh, older lights, so they might be a little funky back in front of you if you are familiar a bit with some of the lighting. But they're quirky. Let's kind of, you know, mess with them. <laughs> Softbox back there, it's going to be muted on the two lights in front, so we want to get that nice, like I said before, great big highlight on both sides. Doing over here, just watching, just just chilling. All right, so I can wave to some of you now. Hey, Will, thanks for coming by. Uni, always a pleasure. John and Rio, man, all you guys are back today. It's surprising. Hey, Tasha. So that's not the best way to work with that for now. This is an old kit, so it doesn't really surprise me that much if that happens. So what we're going to do is we're going to lift these heads up slightly. Like, I don't want to get too much of the ground but I want to have it be the bottom be about on par with the edge of the table here. Sorry, I realized that was kind of an awkward angle. John, you shot some, I don't know if John Mortimer is still in the chat, but You've shot some product in wine bottles before, so you probably will be able to teach me a thing or two. Uh, feel free to chime in if I'm doing anything egregiously wrong. Yeah, like that. <laughs> Sorry, it's all right, guys. The wine is okay. I have a feeling 
happen that's going to happen again with this light. Uh, I'm going to sandbag me this guy. Yeah, yeah, I know. Thanks for coming by, Will. Oh, there's a lot of you in here right now. Well, not like a ton, but it's cool. All right, I'm going to get uh, another, what's going to get done? Cool. Let's finish putting this guy together and he will get what else we need. Snoot on this. Um, this isn't a snoot that I'm using, it's a kind of a leg shield you see when you do that sort of thing. my pocket wizard here today, which is going to help uh, transmit a signal for the strobes mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. fire them off. Uh, thanks, John. It is difficult probably to hear me when I'm not facing the camera. You know, with, this is going to be like a, an experiment for all parties involved. Test this out. So, something's not right. Something's not plugged in. reason this one wants to be in charge. Alright, so with this sort of thing you want to set the camera settings uh, for studio lighting. So that's gonna be it's pretty powerful light, so you want to have a small aperture and a, like a faster shutter speed. Uh, generally in the studio, you're safe to go with uh, like f16 at 1/125th of a second. 
So let's turn that up. And I'm going to set my ISO as low as I can get it. Let's go, oh, let's go 100 ISO. Make sure to get that wine bottle looking all nice and juicy. And that is very bright for the time being. So what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the lights, turn them down a fair amount. looking better. Kind of getting that nice, uh, the, the big highlights on the side of the bottle that I showed you guys before. Um, these highlights here, they're coming through nicely, but let's uh, see what we can do to improve it more. better. Getting some nice uh, long shadows from that, so I probably want to eliminate some of the shadows if I can. Uh, I'll be able to do that through, uh, well since this light here on uh, the right side, yeah the right side, um, that light is uh, kind of facing down to the backdrop quite a bit. Uh, it's not filling in the backlight that much, so I'm going to try and adjust that really quick. A little bit better, filling out the, uh, the backdrop a little bit more. I think what I probably need to do is probably have an additional light um, to put light directly on the backdrop. Um, because I think that would help sort of blast out most of this stuff. Okay, so let's get our stand. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a fourth light uh, that's going to shoot light directly into the backdrop and it'll blow out the rest of the backdrop because right now I'm still seeing some of the wrinkles.
All right, you definitely want to make sure you turn your lights off when you are doing this because these old packs can actually, uh, you know, electrocute you because they're not grounded that well. Uh, so you got to be careful. But if you know how to use them, they're pretty great and they're super cheap right now too. if I'm not talking a whole lot, but like I am kind of in problem solving mode at the moment because this is all real stuff that I would have to deal with potentially on a shoot. So I apologize if I'm not answering uh, your questions right away. I'll try and get to them. Again, there we go. Now we are getting our backdrop blown out pretty much completely. We can have a bit of a harsh shadow on one side. I think what I can do with that is I can actually raise that light that's in the back and uh, have it more pointed directly down at us. Actually, what I do is I'm going to put an arm on this light to go more above the line bottle. shooting a wine bottle takes so much gear. I mean, I figured it would, but like, it's always crazy. Try something else really quick. I'm going to try without the uh, backlight because we're getting a kind of a long shadow on the front of it, and that is not what I want to happen. That was better. So I'm going to put it anyway on the back up behind it to kind of blow it out a little more.
I'm going to do here is uh, set up an additional back drop of light to kind of overpower and make it a nice clean light backdrop that we want. There we go. Yeah, we almost have a clean light backdrop. Yeah, that's much better than we were getting before. Check the power up on this one light. Sorry guys, some problem solving. Definitely blown out, but we can work with that. So I think we pretty much got that. Uh, a lot of times with products like, oh, you really can't see it that well. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I don't have a way to put it on the screen otherwise. Uh, so this is a pretty good starting point for a raw file to edit. So we'll kind of bring in a Photoshop and clean up some of the highlights around the edges. I'm not gonna like, I'm not saying fix it in post, but I'm just saying like this is a good sort of uh, raw image to work with because it's not very contrasty and we actually have all the hallmarks that we want here. We have nice highlights on the sides. We have a highlight on the top of the bottle. Yeah. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna switch over to the black backdrop and make a much more uh, dramatic photo.
sorry. So for the next image we're going to try to recreate is this one. Now I don't have a tall stem glass um, to use and make it as dramatic, but I do have a short stem glass, or a no stem glass, I guess. I'm going to shoot like that. As you can see, this isn't really a perfect backdrop. Uh, it's kind of wrinkly and that sort of thing. Uh, if I was doing a shoot for a client, I would definitely use like a clean, probably a paper backdrop just so we don't get any uh, light going through it or anything like that. But this is fine for, our, for what we're doing today. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the wine bottle here. So to start with, we're going to start off with just these two lights that are set. Uh, I'm probably going to end up needing a third in the front because we want to get this nice uh, silhouette. Uh, so we're going to start here with these two lights because we can always add more. 
uh, those definitely need to be eaten out of it. I'm going to get in nice and close a bit in a second here. I want to see how my lights look so far. Oh, yeah. We're getting that good. Might need a fill, but I'll show you guys once I swap everything over. Bring you back over to my work table here. <laughs> there we go. So again, uh, this is the photo we're going for to look at this time. This is what I got. Oh man, it just is not going to show up that well. I'll be sure to share. And you can see that I had the outline down here just from setting those two lights up. Um, so that's coming along nicely already. If you look at some of the other, the wine bottles with the white backdrop, we've got like a pretty, uh, pretty clean white here. There's a little bit of highlights blown out uh, on the label here by the edge, but that's gonna be a result of the fact that there's a white label. Uh, in our example here, there's no label on the bottle at all. Um, in this one, sorry, there is a label on this bottle here. So, uh, yeah, it'll all come together now that I've got like a nice neutral flat-ish uh, image with the raw files. Got my trusty 24 to 70 millimeter lens right here. Is all set. Nope, oh, I gotta remove the tripod plate from the base of this guy because I need to be able to shoot on a tripod. I don't have a fancy tool for getting that removed, I just use my keys. Could use a screwdriver, I guess, but don't have any around me today right now. to flip the camera like that so I can see what's going on. Looks pretty good. Actually, I'll be able to get maybe even a little closer since I'm going to be shooting so close. So the look I'm going for here uh, is a look similar to the image in that I want to have like a dramatic uh, I want to make the wine bottle look a little bigger. So I'm going to shoot below it, below eye level, and shoot up. That'll make it look, uh, you know, more heroic. And wine is very heroic in these troubling times. 
Maybe I'll bring the camera a bit closer to me then. Maybe a little bit, a little bit lower as well. Is that where's my tripod? It's right here. So you can see the wine bottle still. Oh boy. Maybe down here. How's that look? All right, this is a pretty uh, heroic looking shot. I'm gonna wanna get in even closer. Just a quick test shot, looking pretty good. I think I need a little more fill on the top of the bottle. That's gonna be tough. Uh, hmm. The top back of the bottle needs to be just a little bit, hot, a little more uh, lit up. Um, let me just show you guys what I mean. Hopefully. So, oh man, yeah, you really can't see it that well. I'm sorry. As you can see, I've got that nice little highlight around the, around the bottle and around the glass there. It's looking pretty close. Uh, but if you look at our example, you can see a little, oh boy, you really can't see it here either. I'll have to share this picture in the description of this video or in a comment or something. Uh, Cause there's a little bit of highlight of the top of the bottle here and I'm not seeing that quite yet. I'm kind of scared to introduce a third light though. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna introduce a reflector uh, because I think that'll kind of bring up some of the dark spots, but also, hmm. One, two, it looks like there might be a third light on one side over here on this, like in front of the bottle right here, maybe. Yeah, so we're gonna try that. I gotta be careful though, because I don't want to like light the base like the, the table that much. Try and keep the light off the uh, surface as much as possible and just shoot directly into the bottle. Let's see how this looks. Mm, that's better. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not loving 
all the detail you can see on the wine label now, which I know in the other picture there isn't a label. Uh, so maybe this is the better shot to have um, for that. It's a lot more dramatic too in that respect. Hmm. Yes, I don't know. Forget about that one. But you got to try stuff, you know. This is uh, just a thing you got to do. Next, I think it does need something, but not a lot. Just a little, little touch right there. This is a silver reflector, a little five-in-one that I have. Uh, there's a diffuser on the uh, on the inside here, and then the gold and uh, a silver and gold back uh, back in here. But we're just going to use the silver to just give a little bump. Bump. Oops. It would help if I turn the pack on a little bit. Sorry, I don't want to be like looking at the preview while you guys can't see it that much, but I just need to see how this is filling in. It's buffering a little bit on the bottom there. Okay. Just about there on this one. Try and move my reflector a little bit closer just to get a bit more of a highlight. Should bounce right off of this light right here. I'm just doing a couple of brackets so we have uh, multiple exposures so I can combine stuff if necessary to get more detail out. When I say brackets, I mean I'm going to take a couple shots uh, that are that'll make it look darker and then a couple shots that'll make it look lighter so I have all that information that I can combine together in Photoshop. Are you guys still chatting? I have not been seeing. Oh, no. <laughs> There's all these people that have been chatting and I haven't been looking at it. I got wrapped up, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sorry, that's my weird finger crotch thing there. All right, uh, we just about have this. Okay, so I guess I'm gonna call this uh, done for now um, because we've been going at this for a little bit. Wow, it's already like 11.30. Um, 
Yeah, so as you can see, uh, photography is quite a craft. You have to kind of know what things will affect what. Uh, there definitely is room to improvise because a lot of times I'll just try things to try things. Um, and that's why you know, you'll see photographers uh, and artists like charge a premium because like a lot of people don't know how to do exactly what we're doing. Um, and it really is like a, a craft. You have to kind of, you know where to start, but to get to that finish line, uh, you can improvise a lot. So let's take a look at what we shot. <laughs> Back at our table here. Okay, let's take a look at the white wine pictures first. So this is what I think is probably, oh man, it's just not, very sharp. This is what I think is probably the better of the photos because the backdrop, oh, you know what? It's upside down, isn't it? Let me fix that for you. No, no. Um, sorry guys, one second, just making sure my phone doesn't power off. All right. So as you can see, this is our white pack drop wine bottle. This is what I managed to knock out, uh, in about an hour. Um, typically shoots like this will take a lot longer. We'll put aside a full day. And we're usually shooting more than one bottle, too, uh, for product in general. I know I said earlier that I haven't shot wine bottles in a long time. But, uh, yeah, usually do it in bulk, I guess. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's pretty good. It's a little neutral. I'll do another video on um, post-production on photos like these. It's, it's neutral. The bottle is a little different than the one in my example here. But uh, you'll still get these nice... Um, like highlights along the edge of the bottle and that sort of thing. Nice clean white backdrop. So we'll do a post-production in a different video. And so then this, boy, you really cannot see that one though. This looks a lot better. Uh, this, this looks really, this looks pretty good. This is when I kind of upped the exposure a little bit towards the end here and got a little too bright. Yeah, that looks great. Um, usually when you're doing, you know, again, uh, product shoots, wine shoots, that sort of thing, um, A, you'll be shooting more of them so you have a lot of time. But as you can see, um, once you get your lighting set up, you can move pretty quickly. Like I did a lot of playing around and testing different types of lighting for both for both these looks um, and there's no really one perfect way to light it there's certainly techniques to get the effect of the, the highlights on the edges and that sort of thing uh, and that's that's all fine and good but really you just you just get to kind of play and once you get that set for the type of look you want whether like you you're shooting 20 bottles of white wine with the same colored label in the same place that can be one setup because you can shoot them all, you know, generally the same way with the same lighting. Um, and so you can get kind of a factory thing going on there. Uh, and then, yeah, for, for different height of bottles, different types of label, like how high the label is going to affect the look you get. Obviously, with this one, I wasn't able to get as clean 
of uh, image in the front here, reflection in the front, because of the label that's on it. And I didn't really feel like peeling the label off because uh, I'd like to drink that wine, and wine just tastes better uh, with the label on, in my opinion. I collect wine bottles for the label. Um, not really. Okay, so I think we are probably all done here. Oh, it's, my phone is upside down. Let me just adjust that. Actually, I don't need to... Okay, so thanks for watching. Uh, we're gonna do uh, some more products soon. I think I wanna shoot uh, noodles next, like a soup, um, a ramen, I'm guessing, because it's cheap and available. We have a ton of it. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you kind of enjoyed it and or learned a little bit. I'm sorry I'm not the best you know, uh, narrator. <laughs> I tend to just put my head down and work. Um, but thank you again for coming out. It was nice to talk to you guys. Uh, be sure to, I'll be sure to reply to your comments uh, after this because I was pretty busy with the other stuff. So thanks again for coming. Uh, and yeah, hopefully next time we'll be shooting a model or food. Uh, that'll be either this week or not this week. <laughs> no schedule. Anyway, take care, guys. And uh, thanks for watching.